Oh hey, it's Wes. And today I want to talk about the seven trickiest moments for a solo wedding photographer. Now, I'm specifically speaking about solo wedding photographers because some of these can be mitigated just by having a second shooter. But if you're like me and I've been running and gunning by yourself, at best maybe with an assistant but no second shooter, then you're gonna to wanna to know about these, especially if you're a newer photographer. I'm mostly talking to newer photographers here. Number one is wedding prep time. And this is mostly a lighting situation. Sometimes you're in a hotel room or a bedroom or a living room where the lighting is just terrible. So what do you do about it? Number one, don't be afraid to ask to move things around, to face people in different ways, to catch the light properly. Even if you're a documentary style photographer, you aren't necessarily compromising how the day is playing out if you just add some slight adjustments. I don't like to be too pushy with things, but I do things as gently and easily as possible to try to get things as good as I can. You might need to add flash or continuous lighting, and so if you're a natural light photographer, it might be time to learn about external light sources. If you don't like flashes, maybe just figure out how to get the lights that are present in the scene to work the best for you, or even bring a continuous light of some kind to help light things up, especially for the makeup and the details and stuff like that. Number two, the bride entering the ceremony room. A lot of these ones coming up now, you won't have a problem most of the time, but when you do, you have to be ready for it. And this is one like that. When the bride walks into the church, the back of the aisle, or walks into the back of the field, all of a sudden things can get crazy. If it hasn't happened to you yet, it will at some point. The attendants, the family, a lot of people feel entitled to get their own photos. And if you set yourself up in a position that you think is good, it might all of a sudden be a terrible position. So before this happens, you have to number one, talk to the bride and the father of the bride or whoever's bringing them down the aisle and figure out exactly where they're entering and how they're coming down. I once had a wedding where the bridal party, instead of coming down the center aisle, I hadn't talked to them about this in advance, unfortunately, they came around the side aisles. Why, I, I don't know. <laughs> I had to sprint across the church to get over there. And so you have to know where they're going to come in and you have to try to stay ahead of the family. So when they're first coming in, you gotta get out ahead of where someone might step out in front of you because you never know when an incredibly rude person will literally body check you out of the way so that they can get a picture on their iPhone 3GS. Fantastic. And then after you've gotten those initial pictures, you can back off and work your way down elbow checking people out of the way as much as necessary. I try to be as unobtrusive as possible, so I won't step in front of guests who are in their proper positions, but if they're hanging out in the middle of the aisle with me, I will step in front of them because my pictures are going to be better than theirs. The first look. So this can happen before the ceremony in a fixed location, or it can happen at the ceremony. So first of all, before the ceremony, one of the biggest problems that you can have is doing this outside where the sun is shining on one person's face they're facing each other and not on the other. So you have to try to take these pictures in the shade or in a diffuse lighting situation. Although people might look nice in the sun when you first get them out there, you might suddenly realize that you can't expose both of their faces properly at the same time. So when you're getting ready for the first look, again, exert a little bit of control over the situation and make sure that they're not in a situation where you're going to be blowing out the highlights on one person's face and trying to recover the shadows on the other person's face. And again, if you're by yourself, one person generally comes up behind the other and they turn around or they both turn around at the same time. Start from the side so that you can see both of their faces, at least in profile, all at once. And then move from one side to the other so that you can get each person's face individually. Shoot with a longer lens, as long as you can. You don't want to be up in the middle of this business. This is not your time. And before they do it, make sure that you tell both of them, take your time, there is no rush right now. Because if they don't hear that, sometimes when they do the first look, they're like, oh wow, it's you, and boom, they're out. You haven't had time to capture both their expressions. So make sure that there's nobody too close to them. You're as far away as you can so they can have their moment and take their time. What if the first look is in the ceremony? This can be complicated again. The bride is coming down the aisle, the groom is standing at the front. What do you do? You have to plan for this situation. You've already seen the bride when she first came in, you were a little closer there to get around the people. And then you scoot down the aisle as quickly as you can and get into a position where you can easily capture the groom's reaction with whatever camera or cameras you're using. 
and then continue to take pictures of the bride as she comes down the aisle. But also continue to keep looking back at the groom. Sometimes the groom looks down and doesn't look up until the last second. Sometimes they are eagle-eyed and they're looking right down that row and they see them immediately. So you have to be able to keep one eye on the groom while taking a picture of the bride being escorted down the aisle. This can be tricky and it takes a lot of practice, but you have to keep that in the back of your mind and also make sure you're in that position that you can turn around quickly, boom, 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 take pictures of the groom and then back to the bride finishing her procession down the aisle. So again, there's a lot of planning here. And this is another situation where someone might rapidly step out in front of you because the family tends to be at the front of the congregants in a wedding. Even though they're not between you and the bride necessarily, the immediate family, sometimes when the bride gets toward the front of the aisle, will step out in front of the groom to take a picture of the bride reaching the front of the aisle because again, they don't have a zoom lens, they're just using a phone or an iPad. Yes, they may have been told not to do this, but they will do this, at least from time to time. So be aware that from where you are stationed, someone at the front of the church or event or venue might suddenly step in front of the groom. So be prepared to stand up, dodge around, get higher, move around. Always try not to get yourself stuck in a foxhole, stuck in one location where you can't move, because then you're going to miss a shot when somebody blows it for you. Number four, the kiss. So they've said their vows, they put their rings on, and the officiant says, you may kiss. This is another moment where rude people will jump in front of you. It takes a little while to get used to how ceremonies play out. There is a general ebb and flow of them. And after a while, being a wedding photographer, you'll actually get used to certain officiants and how they do their ceremonies. Yep, yeah, you get to know them. And so get used to that and be ready for that moment. Again, this is another one of those moments where people are going to suddenly jump up and try to get in front of you, even if they're just cheering or clapping, not even taking pictures. I'm not mad at them, but be aware that people might suddenly be in front of you. So when it comes time for the kiss, be ready to stand up and get around those people. It's all about preparedness. Just gotta keep those things in the back of your mind. Moving on to something a little bit different, the receiving line. So after the wedding, the couple has gone back up the aisle and their guests are going to walk past them. Now, a lot of the time, people aren't even planning to have a receiving line, but it happens anyway. And so once they get back there, there are two things that you need to do. You need to pick your position and you need to try to pick a higher ground because that line is going to get super cramped. Even during COVID with masks on, there's a bottleneck there and people start to smack into each other. And it's hard to shoot around that. But if you can find a chair or something or some steps nearby that you can stand on to get over that, then you can take pictures much more easily during this receiving line time. Because there will always be people in front of you. It's not rude. It's just there are a lot of people moving through a small space and they all want to greet the bride and groom. Some try to push this off until the reception and that is a lot easier, but this is and generally speaking, just the reflex of people, they want to congratulate them immediately. So try to get a higher ground and make sure that you stake out your spot because that whole area can get eaten away very quickly. You might need to put on a longer lens before you do this as well, depending on whether or not you're shooting with two bodies and two focal lengths. The grand entry at the reception. This one can be very tricky and takes planning. You have to talk to the bride and groom or the wedding party and also talk to the MC of the event and find out exactly how and when they're going to be entering the room. You need to know the full path, not just the door they're going to come in, because that will vary, but exactly how they're going to enter the room. And once again, you have to plan for everyone standing up and clapping. So you might find a position that you think is great, but as soon as everyone stands up, that position is terrible. So plan for everyone to stand, figure out what that route is, get your light right, get your lenses right, and plan ahead for that. Again, don't just assume that there is an obvious way for them to enter that room. They might come in around the back, they might come in a side door. Then all of a sudden, you miss that moment. It's easy to do. Number seven, the final event that you can easily blow is the bouquet toss. This is a fun shot, but it's generally way towards the end. It's dark, you're in the reception hall a lot of the time. You don't have much light to play with. How do you get this right? Now, I'm going to suggest that you use off-camera flash for this because 
Yeah, otherwise you're going to have to use a lot of ISO. You're going to be way up there with ISO. So, first of all, if you're not using off-camera flash, you've got to get your shutter speed to well over 1 250th of a second. Now I know you like to use a slow shutter speed when it's dark in the reception, but if you're going to catch things moving through the air and people fighting and grabbing and cheering and you're going to be looking at at least 1 500th of a second if you really want to capture that action in any adequate way. If you're using a flash, however, you can turn that down to probably 1 1 60th of a second so you don't get too much streaking. And then set your flashes at no higher than 1 8th power. Hopefully you have more than one. So one behind for a kicker, one in front. Sometimes it takes even more than that because the bride is facing them and they're facing the bride and you want all their faces to be lit so you can go back and forth. Then additionally, one of the issues that you're going to have with collecting light is you need to have a narrower aperture for this. I understand, it's late, you've been at the reception for a while, you're tired of high ISO noise, and so you've gone down to like 1814 to get all that light that you can. But in this circumstance, you're shooting a group of people that are going to be moving around and getting in front of each other. It's really dark. You're gonna to have to stop down that aperture to f2.8 or narrower if you can get that amount of light. So if you're using a flash, 1 1 60th of a second, f2.8, maybe even f4, maybe even 5.6, if you can get enough power, set those flashes to 1 8th power, and then move your ISO to compensate for all that. Why only 1 8th power on the flashes? Because things are gonna be happening fast. If you go any higher than that, you might end up thermally throttling or just not having a fast enough refire rate on those flashes. If you set them to one half or one to one, you're gonna get off one shot, and then when the decisive moment happens, and you don't know when that's gonna happen, you're gonna have a black picture because your flash isn't gonna go off. So don't set those flashes too high. Try to have a more powerful flash or more of them, and don't set them higher than one eighth so you can do this fast. And there you have it. Seven moments on a wedding day that are way too easy to screw up and things that you can do about that. If you have any questions or suggestions, <laughs> any more moments that are easy to blow, let me know down in the comments below and I'll get back to you there. But until next time, let's go take some photos.